Hey, Tony here. And why are you looking at me like that? Why do you look excited? Is it this? That's a strange way to respond to the hypothetical deaths of millions. No, really though, that, that book's about a lot of people dying. And in fact, a lot of our media is about a lot of people dying. In fact, a lot of our media is about the apocalypse. So why is it that the most extreme kind of destruction seems to excite us so much? The type where society as a whole doesn't get away, where the ending is often bad or ambiguous at best. Is it just you, you strange, sadistic viewer of videos? No, of course not. This stuff kills it in the box office. People line up to watch the end of the world every year. Tell the poll conducted somewhat recently by Reuters suggests that 22% of Americans think the world will end in their lifetime. So what gives? Why do we love watching ourselves get blown up, infected, eaten, even when the ending isn't happy? On this episode of Long Story Short, we are getting at the root of our strange obsession with the apocalypse. The apocalypse is a lot to unpack. Let's start with a more fundamental question and then build it up from there. Why do people get obsessed with anything? Some things seem to spread through society like, well, can you finish these names? Katniss, Harry, Sherlock. It's more than just pop culture though. If you take a picture with a Polaroid camera, you're likely to shake it, even though that shaking only risks damaging the image. This rarely means eggplant, and I'm nearly certain that you know that this has got next to nothing to do with an apple. These concepts are familiar with so many people because they spread not unlike viruses. You hear something cool, something that entertains you, fits your worldview, or illuminates something about the world around you. Maybe it's just something that everyone else does, like the whole Polaroid picture thing. You're a social creature, so you take in some of these ideas, and in expressing them down the line, you pass them on to other people. And then the process repeats, unless something stops or amplifies it. There's a name for these mental viruses. They're called memes, and they're everything, and they're everywhere. The spread of an interaction between memes is a big part of what makes up society's broader consciousness. There is a lot more to be said on the subject, but I'll save it for another video. What's important here is that when one gets really contagious, it can spread like wildfire. The challenge, then, is understanding what makes different memes contagious. With the apocalypse, we're dealing with some highly contagious stuff. Luckily, there's a fair deal of literature discussing this meme, particularly from media scholar and philosopher Barry Vacker. Vacker's model of the apocalypse meme notes a certain trend. The memes spread and replicate with images and depictions of what-if scenarios, interesting and intriguing hypotheticals that beg attention, especially when they're violent. Ever daydreamed about what you would do in a robbery or a shooting, for example? How you'd handle a fight? What if right now someone comes through that door and they want to hurt you or someone you love? Among other things, they give a perceived survival advantage, even if it rarely works out in reality the way it does in our minds. But it's something many of us do. In the apocalypse and things like it, this is turned up to 11. We watch the end of individual lives, cities, countries, often the world. And in the same way that we might ourselves imagine handling a tense situation, the protagonists in these stories try to navigate the end of the world. This stuff isn't new. Apocalyptic media has had other popular phases, gracing us with the likes of When Worlds Collide, Meteors, and a host of other B-movies from the golden age of cinema. But it goes deeper. The apocalypse isn't just in the future, it's also in the past. Across religions and across borders, it is likely that the Great Flood rings a bell. 
It's a familiar story to many people today due to its depictions in the Abrahamic religions, but it's a tale told as far back as some of the first stories we have. A world-wrecking flood is mentioned very clearly in the Epic of Gilgamesh, a story that is over 4,000 years old. But if the apocalypse can occur in the past, what gives? Isn't the apocalypse the end of everything? Well, not necessarily. It can be, but in the really contagious apocalypse memes, it usually isn't. When the comfortable but restrictive hustle and bustle of modern life is burnt to the ground, those who emerge are faced with a fresh start or a bleak future. Either way, it's the birth of a newer, often simpler world. Think less taxes, more axes. These endings and beginnings create hypothetical models of the world, which, believe it or not, can be pretty attractive. In addition to the pure escapism that comes from watching the spectacle unfold, knowing how things end can empower feelings of meaning, destiny, and purpose. In philosophy, as well as in human life in general, endings are rarely given the finality they seem to imply. Instead, they're usually associated with some transformation of consciousness, leading into new beginnings. The end of your teenage years, for example, mark the beginning of adulthood for most people. People go to college to get educated and begin a new way of life. With the apocalypse, the future isn't some fuzzy amalgam of politics and uncertainty, limited time and resources. Nope, the end is coming. You've got a baseball bat, and you can choose to roll over and die, or fight to see what comes out the other side. Of course, sometimes, well, there isn't a choice. Sometimes the end really is the end. And yet, the apocalypse meme persists. Part of this is certainly that new beginnings don't necessarily need people. Watching the dawn of a new era on Earth, untainted by humans, can push some of the same buttons. But even in the face of total destruction, the apocalypse meme can evoke another, in some ways more powerful emotion. The sublime. The sublime is more philosophical. It's an emotion that many are familiar with, but it can be hard to put a finger on. It's a feeling of awe in the face of something great, though great here doesn't necessarily mean good. It's beyond calculation, beyond understanding. The sublime can be felt when you look at photos taken of Jupiter's great red spot from around the planet. The feeling you get when you read about the scale of the universe. The feeling one may experience as they emerge from the chaos of a hurricane into the temporary peace of the eye, and watch as the eye wall swirls and towers into the sky around them, unstoppable. It's not necessarily fear, nor is it elation. It can come from things that are scary, massive, or both. Describing what this word means completely, if such a thing is even possible, could be a video in itself. But for our purposes, just know that this slippery feeling can be quite attractive when people are in no real danger. And it seems the apocalypse memes in our media take full advantage of that fact. All of these things taken together help to illustrate why the apocalypse meme replicates and spreads the way it does. It stimulates the morbid sort of desire in people to experience the ultimate what-if scenarios, but from a safe distance, even if their subject matter strikes a little close to home. People keep coming back to watch the endings and beginnings play out and see how the protagonist survives the train wreck, how society falls and rises from the ashes, or how it doesn't. When everything else crumbles, the elusive an attractive feeling of the sublime emerges people in watching a society, a species, struggle and fail against forces which are too great, too uncaring to stop. If you're the kind of person who spends time pondering what ifs, this stuff is catnip for your imagination. Evidently, a lot of people are, and so the meme spreads. But now, a word of caution, because the apocalypse is clearly an attractive idea, even if its nature as such isn't intuitive. Don't let the things we just talked about cause you to lose sight of what's possible. There are a lot of memes competing for your attention right now. I, I mean, I'm one of them. 
And the apocalypse, in particular, can take up a lot of space. The what-ifs don't have to be bad. They're way flashier that way, and living in a world where nuclear weapons exist, they're probably more convincing to many. But the apocalypse isn't worth fetishizing, I think. Don't pretend that it isn't being pessimistic. The endings, beginnings, and the sublime don't have to stem from our annihilation. Sci-fi can also bring us images of a future where we make it. If there were ever a chance of that happening or not happening, if we have ever been on the cusp of something greater, it's right now. The more optimistic cartoons and movies of the past imagine a future that we are living in today. They usually didn't get it right, but they did have faith that we'd get there. Movies like Her, for example, imagine a future where technology advances, but society remains as it does today, except a bit cleaner and more refined, to the point where it hardly stands out when it doesn't need to. Star Trek imagines a future where humanity experiences the sublime without wiping itself out, ending most petty conflict on our planet, and instead spreading across the galaxy. The truth is, Endings don't have to come with mass death. Beginnings don't need to emerge from the ashes of the past. The apocalypse is fun to imagine, but don't let it cloud your view of the future, for all the conflict and trouble that exists in the world, we are on the verge of some great things. There are efforts today which are taking substantive steps toward colonizing other planets, curing aging, giving people the tools to fully realize themselves and the reality around them. Our ancestors imagined a fantastic future for us, most recently under the looming threat of nuclear war. In many ways, we have surpassed it, and in many, we have fallen short. But we're here nonetheless. What do you say we keep up the trend and set a goal for our future that doesn't look like a crater? Because if it's not a crater, well, then it can be anything else. That leaves a lot of room for great things. I hope you're as excited as I am for the future, and I hope you're a little scared too, because that can be healthy. Let me know what you think of the future in the comments. And as usual, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thank you all for watching as usual. I, I know I already said it, but I still can't thank you all enough. Um, I'm gonna keep this one short. I've been wanting to do this topic for a while because you know, media is kind of my thing. I, I almost wish that I didn't do it this week because I am actually just drowning in work. Um, if, if I only would have had more time, if it weren't finals, <laughs> there are so many more movies I would have loved to have stuck in there. But there are a lot of chances for follow-ups. I may do some on this video if any of you have any uh, cool points to point out and if you notice any things that I got wrong or got right but just wish I would have talked about more by all means let me know I hope you all enjoyed this I'm going to be taking a break from releasing a video next week because again it's final season and this one I have never had a busier final season than this one but anyway I hope you all enjoyed watching this I hope you all feel a little bit more enlightened maybe inspired for the future and uh, I hope you all enjoy whatever the next apocalypse movie out there is because, hey, it's some pretty entertaining stuff. Have a great week. I'll talk to you all next time.